If you like to play more direct, when you lose the ball, your players come back, long ball counter. If you like to press when you lose the ball, quick counter. And quick counter is better for the best formations on eFootball 23. Most of you guys know, some of you don't. You guys can join me as well if you have a different opinion and you guys on YouTube, comment down below. After trying everything, like ridiculous amount of formations and squad build, there are two formations that you can vary that are the best options. 4-3-3 variation and three at the back variation. Let's start with the 4-3-3. Now, you can go with the classic 4-2-1-3, right? Nothing, uh, nothing unusual, you guys see that all the time. The mistake a lot of people do is choosing between quick counter, long ball counter. If you flick this, right, it tells you how the team reacts. Let me just put that out of the way before we get into the other formation. Some of you guys know, some of you don't. If you like to play more direct, when you lose the ball, your players come back, long ball counter. If you like to press when you lose the ball, quick counter. And quick counter is better for quick passing. And I'm not saying you can't do quick passing, but the biggest difference between quick counter and long ball counter, in my opinion, is your team presses when you lose the ball and your team retracts back when you lose the ball. Otherwise, yeah, with long ball counter, just get the ball to the front quickly. So, in my opinion, when it comes to the esports scene and pro, most of them do use quick counter, long ball counter. It doesn't go beyond that. Very difficult to see possession game. And ideally, you would always see a setup like this. Okay? You always see that. Defense on a full defense on a fullback. Most likely deep line or defense on a DMF, and then counter target on a flank or a CMF. Usually counter target either on the guy who's slow, who's fast, or has low stamina. Those two. I think the idea of using counter target on AMF doesn't work. Most people just do this, play 4 to 4. I think 4 to 4 against good players, you'll still get smoked, really. And obviously, if you're facing a guy who's just playing on the flank, spread them out wide, put defense on both. But also, if you're getting pressed on the flank a lot, remove the defense because you want them to press. If, you, if you're getting pressured all the way here, you lose the ball here, you're in trouble. So there's a difference between uh, somebody spamming the flank and somebody pressing you on the flank. So that's a, in my opinion, you can also use your sub-tactic, for example, make your sub-tactic position to cool the game off. But last minute goals are ridiculous in this game. So the 4 3, three variations, 4 two, one, 3 that's number one. I call this one eSport. Because quick counter with a double AMF function. Not double, but DMF, CMF, AMF. Now the second one, I call this one meta. Long ball counter is more direct. Kind of more suited on dream team rather than offline. And the system is kind of pretty much the same. It's ideal to have a destroyer or anchor and then a box to box or an orchestrator. In every 4-3-3, in my opinion, anchor, destroyer, along with box-to-box -box orchestrator, it's an absolute must. So it's not about just using all your best players, playing play style. Important. Again, the same system like the previous one. Most of the time instructions are defense on a fullback, counter target on two strikers, sometimes defense on a DMF. I think there's one thing a lot of people don't pay attention to. Man marking and tight marking, we don't use it that often. There are certain games I do use it. Take this one, for example. Arsenal. He's playing 65% on the right. That's my left. When I see something like this, it's worth tight marking. And obviously, there's a difference between man marking and tight marking. If you use man marking, you select your player, a particular player, to mark. But with tight marking, you just select who you want to mark. And tight marking is good if you think your opponent is switching formations, tight marking. Because if you use man marking and he's changing his formation, if he's go messy on the left, you're marking messy with man marking, not tight marking, he changes his formation, you get messed up. But how often do you guys use man marking or tight marking? So it goes the same system, man. A guy annoying you on the flank, spread them out wide, use defense on them. Again, I know these are pretty much basics for most of you guys. Some people don't know about this kind of stuff. <clears throat> Trying to put that on YouTube when we start this series. So from now on, it's going to be whether even pack opening. I'm only going to do packs when I think it's an upgrade to my players. We're not going to use uh, cute players no more. 
Again, same system, destroyer orchestrator or anchor box to box and so on. Now, ideally for this setup, I would not use classic 10 here, but I like Hullet too much. And I played 4 to 4 a lot. I think recently my high HT was 4 to 4. However, my 4 to 4 was shaped different. I was playing like this 4 to 4. Because I would face 4 2 or 3 1 a lot, this is the 4 to 4 I personally like to play. I like to have width. But if you want to be more effective, in my opinion, this is the kind of 4 to 4 you want to try. This guy needs to link up with the front three. If he doesn't, and if he doesn't have good passing, you're going to be in trouble. But also, you need to understand, if you're playing 4 to 4, you need to know when to drop this guy as AMF. These are the kind of stuff sometimes... Have you ever wondered most of, most of the time you play against somebody, I don't know, top 500, top 200... As soon as they can see the goal or you're dominating them, they pause the game, they come back and pay attention what they change. It's important. I, I still, even though we don't have a lot of tactical customization, simple changes can really change your game. Unless you're playing those games where nothing makes sense. That's a different thing. And that's, it's not always delayed though. So eSport, that's usually for offline, I would say. Online, this has to be the best one I've faced and played against. The default 4 2 one, 3 uh, do you know, forget meta, forget the narrow three strikers, right? This, <laughs> this one is so effective, dude. And I've, I've seen people even on top 100 using it, really. Same system. I like Destroyer Orchestrator. If I had a good anchor man, definitely. Definitely um, anchor box to box. Now, a lot of times I change my DMF into CMF. Because I want my CMF to link up to cover these spaces. So if you feel like you're getting isolated with your AMF, definitely change that. And if I really want to play a crossing game, put left footed Messi there, Neymar here. The game is weird though, dude. Like, do you ever play a game where you or your opponent's bad pass are passing great? Terrible offense awareness is elusive. Creative playmakers positioning like Ankerman. In, in some matches, this kind of stuff is very weird. Because put it this way, if you're bad players, if you're standard players with low defensive awareness, low offense awareness, they're always in a good place in attack and defense, and, you, and the guy knows how to use that to their advantage, you know, it's going to mess you up, even if you have a team full of legends. And the same thing goes with 4-2-3-1, man. If you, if you feel like you're getting countered like crazy defense on two fullbacks, I personally like to have one fullback to overlap. Beyond that, you know, counter-target on a flank, counter-target on Pape, and so on. And obviously, you can change this to your liking based on what you face. Even if you have two fullbacks overlapping, I think a lot of time if you have two fullbacks overlapping, that could lead to a lot of problems. Two fullback here, if overlaps, think about the space that you will leave. These guys will end up covering, and you will have a massive gap in the middle. I don't know what that circle means, but this massive gap you're going to end up having. In a way, in a way. That's why a lot of times when I face a guy, imagine somebody's using a formation like this with two attacking fullbacks. Those two fullbacks are defensively trained. And here they have whole player, Paul, Depaul, and then on the other side, like whole player, Depaul, along with uh, De Bruyne. A lot of times, it doesn't matter who the DMF is, they just come back into perfect position to defend which is mind-boggling. So we had the eSport, we had the meta, and we have the standard default one. Now the diamond one is kind of my favorite in a way, especially if you have solid midfielders, solid midfielders. An anchor man is an absolute must because you have a single guy in the middle. Anchor man usually stays vertical. So here I would say an anchor man is a must. You want to go classic anchor man to box to box. Actually, this one with more offensive midfielders work, like a box to box like Barella. So even if you use offensive uh, midfielders, I really struggle against a normal diamond with offensive midfielders, like even at De Bruyne or Chalanolo and so on. So this is the third or fourth option. I find this one a little bit more centrally focused. But the moment you cannot link up, if your SS cannot link up with your strikers, it's going to be super insufficient. Obviously, you can get, you can get more creative. You can change these guys into AMFs on the flank and so on. As I said, if you understand advanced instructions, if you understand um, player abilities, playing style, these things could be very simple. This is just a quick walkthrough about 
the best formation in football, in my opinion, after playing against so many top players and me trying every single thing with every phase, really. Next up, that's the last one for 4-3-3. It's basically a 4-3-3 flat. Now, this one is more defensive. If you have solid, like, let's say you've got Fabino here, and then you've got Kante, and then you got an orchestrator here, right? Pain in the ass to break 4-3-3 flat, especially when people use defense on two fullbacks. Now, obviously, if you have defense on two fullback, defensively good. Attacking-wise, you'll not have width. And on the flank, of course, you can make these guys wider. But if you prefer, the problem with this one is going to be you're going to have a massive space in between your midfielders. See this massive gap? That's going to be a problem to link up your players with them, especially with quick counter. So if you don't have good passers in the midfield, it's going to be very difficult to reach your strikers with those passes. Because I played this 4 3 3 flat a lot with Klopp. I think it was PES 21. Kind of a different thing. I mean, eFootball is kind of like PES in a way. There are only like two or three things that are very different. So that was it about the 4-3-3, in my opinion. The next most effective formations so far that I've used, I have variations one, apart from 4-3-3 variation, is three at the back. 